morning, everyone, and welcome back to Sugar Mama's Fireplay podcast. I am financial planner Canna Campbell, and it is 2023. Happy New Year, everyone. Now, this podcast is a little bit different. It's a little bit special because I have switched my podcast platform over to Anchor, which is this Spotify-owned platform, but it is also video-enabled, which means you can actually watch me do my podcast rather than just listen to me so you can see where I'm sitting you can see what I'm wearing you can feel like you're just sitting in front of me and we're having a chat in person so let me know what you think about this feature whether it's something you'd like me to keep and keep using or whether it's something that doesn't really bother you either way and you prefer to listen to an audio format anyway all right so quick little update for you if you aren't on Instagram Uh, I need to let you know, I'm doing the Gabby Bernstein 21 day manifesting challenge. I am someone who loves manifesting work. I've been very open up within my other videos and my podcasts, and I don't know what compelled me to do this, but I am doing it. And um, if you're interested in learning more about it, make sure you follow me on both my Instagram accounts at sugar mama TV and at Canna Campbell official, because I give you all the updates as to what's going on, what day I'm up to, what I've learned, what I'm liking, what I'm not liking, and most importantly, the magic that is unfolding around me because a lot of stuff is is moving and I can really feel it. And it's I'll do a podcast wrapping up the summary of it all, but I think it's really fun to be able to share this experience with you and to absolutely everyone, and there's a lot of people out there, they're doing this challenge with me and they're DMing me through Instagram, sharing me with what happened and what they found and what discovered and what they're liking, what they're not liking. So feel free to connect with me because this is a great conversation I'm really loving having with, with everyone that wants to do some manifesting work for 2023. All right, with every single podcast, video, blog post, and you see on Instagram, please know it is general advice only. I am not giving you personal advice telling you what to do. It is purely for your financial education, inspiration, and empowerment. All right, so today I want to talk to you about goal setting and New Year's resolutions for 2023. I want to share with you what I recommend you do to achieve those goals. And I also want to share with you what I'm going to be doing very differently in 2023 in comparison to the other years where I've worked on my goals, which is pretty much all the time. Now, I want to also, I guess, set the record straight by saying and sharing with you that I love this time of the year. I think it is a really great place and space during the year to set down some important, I guess, changes, improvements, shifts, uh, plans, goals, adventures. And it's something, you know, I think, I don't know why it is we do, why, why is it a New Year's resolution? I don't know. But I also want to let you know that I do this, not just in 1st of January, I do this throughout the year. I do this uh, every month, the beginning of every month. I review my goals, I set new goals, I adjust them, I tweak them, I, I, I do everything. To me, New Year's resolutions happen on the first of every single month. They also um, happen again on not so much of an intense basis, but, all, uh, but I still do it every quarter. And, and I have another big wave of, um, I guess, a high vibration New Year's resolution is I do a new financial year resolution. So just because it's the 1st of January doesn't mean this is the only time of the year to be doing this. If you're really committed and take your personal growth and journey seriously, you should be doing your New Year's resolutions throughout the year, particularly if you want to see profound growth shifts, breakthroughs, and just really raising your bar and like seeing where you're, where you really are worthy and meant to be with your life. What's really you know, your true serving desire and passion in life. All right. Okay. So for me, I think I've got ADHD. Um, I'm actually going to go and see someone about this because it's been something I've been planning to doing in my head for a really long time, trying to work through. And I'm someone who needs a goal in my life. I find having a goal in my life is incredibly anchoring. Um, and if I want to, get somewhere in life and achieve something or learn something or grow something or or, or evolve, I have to have a goal that I come back to on a regular basis because I get very easily distracted. You know, temptation comes my way and 
I, I just lose myself and I can end up treading water, not getting anywhere. I get then really frustrated and down on myself. So I am someone who loves goals. I need goals. I want goals. I love that feeling of, oh, what's my next goal? And going through that inspiration phase where you think, oh, what's the next big thing I want to work on? Or So I need it. It makes me feel alive. It makes me feel like I'm growing. It makes me feel like I'm moving. It's something I'm addicted to. So, it, you know, this is important to me. And so I'm really, I guess, as you can probably tell by watching this and hearing the tone of my voice, I, I take this very seriously. So I want to share with you what I do and what I find really works when it comes to setting New Year's goals. And as I said, I'm also going to share with you what I'm going to be doing differently for 2023 because I've gone through a bit of a, a further awakening. And I'd say some of this has actually been triggered or uncovered by doing some of Gabby Bernstein's work. All right, so this is what I do. All right, I spend some time thinking about what I want to achieve and what I want to have achieved this time next year. So, you know, where if I'm sitting in this position right now in my bedroom, sitting on the floor, cross-legged in, you know, technically be 2024, but in say December, you know, 2023, what do I want to say to my, like to who I've actually have achieved? What I might, would I sit here and feel really proud thinking, wow, I uh, got this project done or I, I got uh, this skill done or I, uh, you know, saved up this much money or I paid down this much debt. And I really spend time alone uh, thinking about what is it that I really want to have achieved by, for example, the 1st of December, 2023. Now, a quick note on why I've used that date. Uh, okay, I run out of steam in December. I have I mentally click out, um, or check out, I should say, by the 1st of December. And I, in talking to my friends, a lot of people are like this. They aren't actually, uh, they've kind of run out of momentum uh, they're exhausted from the from a big year behind them, and it's all become suddenly about quickly catching up with everyone before Christmas and all the Christmas festivities and responsibilities and obligations and obviously all the expense of you know seeing people, catching up, travel, gifts, uh, all that stuff. So for me, uh, I'm really my goals are going to be really set around the first of De finishing or the deadline being the first of December 2023. So. I spend some time thinking about what I want to achieve and I write everything down. I pen to paper is a really spiritual and intellectual connection for me. Uh, if I have it floating around in my head, it evaporates within a couple of minutes. So writing pen to paper is good. It also means I can really fine tune what I'm really going to go after. And often as I'm writing more stuff just organically flows from, from there. And I write whatever comes to me. Often, if I think it, I stop at that one thought. It doesn't progress any further. But when I write it, I write that 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 intention or that goal or that desire or that thing that I want to achieve. And then very quickly, boom, another goal will come out as next. There's another thing that I want to achieve. Whereas when I just think it in my head, I, it, I get that one and then I can't really think much more beyond that. When I pen to paper, it flows. And I, I discover within like a couple of minutes, all right, I want to achieve that. I want to feel that that's completed my life. I want to have that project done. I want to have that project halfway done. I want to have this habit system in my life. I want to have saved this much money. I want to have invested this much money. And I want to have, uh, have this much money in my superannuation. It just flows. So pen to paper is very, very profound. Obviously, some people prefer to, to type on a computer. That's fine. But just make sure whatever you're doing, you experience a flow and a rhythm and a momentum so that you're really going deep with this stuff and open yourself up to this stuff. Stuff. The next thing I do once I feel like my list is complete, and I will make it an important point here, I can sometimes go a little bit crazy and come up with like 20 goals. That doesn't really work for me. It's too many balls in the air. I, I'm not very efficient with my time. Um, I, I, I become too scattered. So I really like don't like to have too many goals in my life. And I'm going to come to the, at this at the very end about this important change that I'm doing this year. So I have my goals and at the moment, they, if I summarize them and, and group a couple together, they're really between sort of three to five key goals. Now, I then 
And this is the important part because this is where you really go deep with this stuff. And that is I start writing about all the things I would feel if I have achieved those goals. So I'm actually going to flip to my special magic page in my book so I can actually um, share with you some of this stuff. Now, some of my goals are, and I, w I won't obviously share all of them because goal setting is very private, um, is I want to have put, I want to save and invest or manifest and invest at least $12,000 for the $1,000 project for the year of 2023. I'm also, this is a bit of a secret inside sneak peek. I'm going to be looking at increasing the margin loan that's attached to the $1,000 project portfolio. Again, this is not advice, anyone. Definitely not product advice, definitely not personal advice. I'm just sharing with you that there's going to be an element within 2003 when I really want to ramp it up with the very conservative gearing strategy that I use. I also want to work on my own mortgage to this new house that we are living in and we manifested, which is in another podcast. And I also want to make sure that our own passive income is growing and I also want to go on a family international holiday at some point in 2023, if we can. So I've got all the few little projects on the, on the pipeline as well. So they're the, the goals that I really want to focus on for 2023. Now, this is what I will feel seeing and feeling, knowing that I've ticked these boxes and I've achieved these goals. I will feel incredibly connected connected to what I'm working on, passionate about what I'm working on, excited about what I'm working on. I feel very powerful, powerful knowing that I'm making, sh I shouldn't swear, making stuff happen. That should be a New Year's resolution to me is to stop swearing as much. Um, uh, I will feel like I'm stepping up, taking ownership, uh, growing, evolving. I feel like I'm in control, which is, I guess, Probably one of the things behind my goal setting is having an element of control in my life that makes me feel safe. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's not a good thing. I will feel abundant. I will feel abundant because I am shows that I'm grateful for what I've got and I'm, I'm harvesting it and I'm nurturing it and I'm, you know, being kind to it and maternal to it. And it's growing even further, which leads to me the feeling of being prosperous. This is going to make me feel like I have, you know, my emotional and intellectual and even monetary IQ is continuing to grow and evolve. Uh, feeling that sense of authenticity, because this is what I'm really about. I love personal growth. I love personal development. I love knowing that I'm, I'm, I'm moving through sometimes crap in my life. I'm through, moving through heavy, hard stuff, which is where the most profound growth comes from. Um, I will feel incredibly resilient. I will feel incredibly helpful. I will feel like I am of greater service to other people because as I achieve my goals and learn things and grow from things, I can share that with, with you guys, with everyone who listens to my podcast or watches my YouTube videos or reads my books. I am of greater value and service to you in achieving these goals because I can share the hacks, the habits, the insights, things that work and things that don't work and things that are dangerous, things that are incredibly powerful. So I increase my value. So th even just writing this down it's like high vibration creation stuff and then i also look and think about turning up the volume which brings me to um step number four and that is writing down what sort of personality or skills must i have to help make these goals really actually happen and actually ensure that these things happen so this is where I really want you to realize, and this will take a little bit of, I guess, being your inner cheerleader or coach or mindset mentor, where you go, stop telling you yourself that you can't do this, you're not smart enough, or you don't have enough this time or money or friends or uh, in intellect. This is where I want you to just stop that because you have everything you need to achieve your goals, okay? And this is what you, when you realize this, and you realize you have everything, you just need to turn the volume up. So the, I wrote down, for example, a couple of things I really need to turn the volume up within myself to make sure or give my goals the best opportunity of actually being achieved. So, for example, I need to be organized. Organizational is, it, is a it's a habit. It's not something you're born with. It's not in your personality. Being organized is something you practice on a regular basis. You invest time doing a little extra few key things in your life to help make your days run smoother or your weeks run smoother. So I'm going to have to be a lot more organized with my time. I'm quite often someone who's running around like a headless chicken and I realized, no, I need to stop trying to 
put too many things into my day. I need to spread things out more um, pro properly and give myself a break in between each task. I need to stop saying yes to absolutely everything. I need to think twice before I jump on my phone and mindlessly scroll on social media. I sort of need to think twice about accepting a certain phone call if I know that person is going gonna to be a long phone call. I also need to be a doer. And for me to achieve my goals, that means stop talking about it, just go out and do that. Now, um, it's funny, I think I'm a massive doer because I don't really talk about too much stuff, I just go and do it. And it annoys people around me because they're like, did you want to share that with me that you're going to do that? Particularly Tom, Tom will come home and go, okay, we didn't have a conversation about this and you've just gone and done it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a doer. But it's funny, in my relationship, Tom thinks he's the doer because he just gets on and does things. So this is what I want to sort of talk about very, very quickly is I can get stuck. And I think this is a problem of one of the reasons why I have ADHD is I will do it in my head sometimes or I will come across like this block a brick wall where it holds me back and I, um, come, I procrastinate as well as a consequence of not being a doer. So I'm working through that as one of my strengths. I need to become more of a Tom doer rather than a canna doer. Canna doer is great and gets things done, but canna kind of is a little bit haphazard and just runs out like a, a wild banshee woman and, and, and does things. Like, And I have these like moments of rushes of getting lots of things done, but then I hit that brick wall again. Whereas Tom's more of the consistent doer. He just says, he goes, I just get on and do it. So I need to sometimes tone down or turn down the chatter in my head or the self-sabotaging thoughts or the um, negative self-talk that sometimes goes through my head and just, just do things. And I listened to an amazing podcast by Dr. Andrew Huberman from the Huber Lab, and he talks about you can't get into the flow until you've gone through that inertia or that pushback or that um, like procrastination block. He said, if you could just get through that and know that that block is very short and very small and you'll get into that flow in that zone very quickly. So it was a, I'm working through that and it definitely has helping. The other thing is I need to be really mindful of my time, um, really look at the way I'm structuring my week. So investing more time on a Sunday night, looking at my week ahead, going, all right, this is dedicated work time for my podcast. This is dedicated time for my program. Um, this is dedicated time for my videos. This is dedicated time for my other podcasts. How do they afford that? Like just really being mindful of my time. Now, Notice how these are not things that you're born with. These are habits, they're hacks, they're things that you need to practice and work on every time. So really making sure that I have the mental and emotional um, and physical uh, skill set uh, to achieve my goals or give them the best times that happen. So sit down and write all the things that you need to be doing that come from your heart that come from a practical sense of, sense of um, practical, I guess, point of view and perspective so that you can really, you're giving you those goals that you've written down the best an opportunity to be achieved. The other thing is, is what do I, this is number five, what do I need to do or take away in my life to help make these goals happen? And I'm going to use the example of the $1,000 project goal, which, as I said, is $12,000 to be invested into the $1,000 project by 1st of December 2023. Now, I OK, so this is what, what I've I'm going to this is quite personal. Actually, I'm going to share with you my more and my less list. So I've realized in going through all this work and, and talking and doing what I've just said is I need to spend more time alone and for me, when I'm alone, I get so much work done. I literally, when I spend time alone, I go into this bubble, this vortex, and I just power through huge amounts of work. So I need to do more of that so I can have greater efficiency in my life. I've also decided I need to have less alcohol in my life. Now, I'm not a big drinker um, at all, but when I have a few drinks, and don't get me wrong, I love to have champagne with my girlfriends. I love to share a, a nice bottle of wine with Tom and we have like a beautiful seafood dish at home, you know, connecting together. But I've realized, and I'm getting old, alcohol impacts me. I don't bounce back and it really reduces my motivation levels. It takes sometimes a couple of days for me to bounce back to my normal bubbly self. So yes, I am I, I'm not going to give up alcohol because I'm, I don't have a problem with alcohol, but I realize I've got to be more strategic as to when I choose to have a drink and when I don't, I know not to have a drink because I've got a lot going on. I really want to be at my maximum capacity. I want to be operating from a high vibration space. The other thing I realized is I need to do more walking. I, when I walk, 
when I, especially when I take my dogs for a walk in the morning, that's when I come up with my best ideas. I come up with the amazing sources of inspiration. I feel more open. I feel a greater flow around me. Um, it's also a very efficient use of my time because I get to then properly spend more time listening to podcasts or listening to affirmations. I've also realized I want to have less consumerism. Now, I'm not really a big, big shopper. I, I do enjoy fashion, but I do, and I sh shop in a very mindful way, but I just want to, I guess, spend less time getting caught up in temptation of wanting to buy things. The other thing I realize I want more of is more exercise, in particular doing cardio. 2023, I worked with my personal trainer, Adam Cooper, who's incredible, and we've been doing lots of weights. I have become so much stronger. I've become more lean. If you're watching this muscle, you can see my arms are looking a lot more toned. Um, and that's great. And I'm loving that. But I've let my cardio slip. And that's probably because of what happened when I gave birth. So I really want to improve my cardio fitness, which means getting on a bike or even, dare I say, trying to learn how to run again. So more uh, more cardio. I also want to have less stuff. I having, a, you know, really leaning back into my love of minimalism, decluttering more, um, having less into my home, being really mindful and making sure I use something up before I go and replace it. I also want more manifesting work. Um, I'm, this is why I'm doing this Gabby Bernstein work at the moment, because manifesting is something I really believe in. And I think I'm very good at doing it, but I'm also got this insecurity and this self-consciousness that I'm uh, not worthy of it or I shouldn't I don't deserve to have this power so I'm one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I want to learn more about what I do right and how do I do it better how do I do it in a to serve more people and help more people um, and learn to make peace with myself that everything I manifest and attract around me I deserve um, it is it's a safe skill to have it's a helpful skill to have it's a it's a powerful skill to have so I really want to do more of that I also want less distractions in my life so I can have more time to do manifesting work so um, you know being mindful of which phone call to pay take or which text message to prioritize returning or email to return um, the other thing is I want to see more of my friends, see more of my friends in person and have less time speaking to them over the phone or messaging them on WhatsApp or Instagram or texting them. I want to see more of my friends in person rather than seeing them, um, you know, connecting with them, you know, through a phone. So these, these are the things I need to do. And that, that's why I've worked out what I want more of and what I want less of. And I feel, again, that's just taking my journey or my path or my adventure that's ahead of me and really fine tuning it and giving me such an important and powerful sense of clarity and direction as to where I am going. And sorry, I mentioned I talk about the thousand dollar project here. So for me, that what I want less of is obviously less spending so I, um, of, of wasteful stuff so I can put more money towards a thousand dollar project. I also um, want to remove temptation so that I don't get distracted and spend money where I could potentially be saving money and I can put more money towards a thousand dollar project. What I want more of with a thousand dollar project is daily, daily checking my thousand dollar project account. So I'm constantly reminded as to what I want to do, which is get my next thousand dollars into that savings account so I can then go and buy more shares for it and continue obviously growing my passive income, which flows back to my, you know, my goals that I wrote down on step number one. So this is really, really important to me and doing all this, these doing the things I've put in here. So having more manifesting work, hopefully is going to allow more money to go into the thousand dollar project. Um, doing more walking is going to help give me more and better and bigger and new ideas and opportunities, inspiration to earn extra money for the thousand dollar project. So you can see how focusing on what you want more of um, and what you want less of is positively aligned to the achievement of all of your goals, no matter what they might be. The next step and step number six is the signs that you are on the right track. How will you know that you are doing the right things and the right powerful things and the, the, the things that are positively aligned with achieving your goals. What are the signs that are gonna pop up in your life? And again, this is really important because it, this is what fuels your, this is your progress signal. And I always, I always say in my books, progress fuels success. If you have a goal, for example, to lose weight or to get fitter, and you make a conscious note of what you weigh on, and the date or how far you can run and the date, and the next week you jump on the scales and you realize, oh wow, I've dropped half a kilo. Or I can run an extra kilometer in the space of a week. That will fuel you to keep going with that goal. You'll go, you know what? It's working. 
sweating it out of the gym is actually paying off. I'm getting stronger and fitter. I can run an extra kilometer. Or wow, um, cutting you know down my carbs or my sugar or or stopping eating at 7 p.m. instead of 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. before I go to bed is actually working. It's worth it. I'm going to keep going with this. And so you'll continuously see those results. So this is why it's really important that you make yourself aware that you are open to all the signals and signs to show you that you are on the right path and all these sacrifices, all the hard work, all the blood, sweat and tears are actually worth it. You are progressing. And I'll tell you what, when you see that sense of progress and feel it, it's so sexy, it's empowering, it's motivating, inspiring, and it gives you this new rush of, you know, bigger and better vibration to keep going with your goals and actually awaken how powerful and how capable we all really are. So these are some of my signs. They're going to be signs that go, you're you're doing it, Kevin. You're on the right track. And you know, buying more shares. Every time I see that my account hit that one thousand dollars, because I'm checking it on a daily basis, I can. I, I'm buying more shares. I'm doing it. It's working. I'm. I'm heading in the right direction. Sure, it might not be like this permanently, all the way up in a straight projection. It's going to be up and down and backwards and forwards, but it's going to be generally in the right direction. Thing is, I'm making. Um, you know, take that moment where I. Uh, put on that application to increase my margin loan. That's going to be a great sign that I'm on the right track. I'm doing the right work. Seeing our family mortgage drop, you know, and that's by taking a note of it, looking at the date, looking how much we owe, and then seeing that come down by checking it, which I'll come to in a moment. Seeing our passive income grow. The other day I sat down and I was doing all my goals and actually wrote up how much passive income we earn as a family through investments that I've built, investments that Tom's built, investments we've built together. Um, uh, including our superannuation in there because that's a really important asset for us in our own financial journey. So I know what we earn in a passive income and seeing when I go to check in on my goals and review them, seeing that number grow, they're going to be signs that I'm on the right track, I'm doing the right work. And the other thing I'm going to notice, and that is feeling more vib- for, feeling more energetic, feeling more vibrant, feeling more fit, feeling stronger, feeling more resilient, feeling more growth from learning more, becoming wiser, becoming more insightful, becoming more intellectually and spiritually, I guess, uh, intellectually, um, sorry, I searched that again, becoming more intellectually and spiritually aware and attuned and in touch. And, uh, you know, really, I want to really take my love as I feel I'm starting to own it with more confidence about the spirituality of money and the energy of money and still apply don't get me wrong for people going no I want to hear about investing I want to hear about super I want to hear about reducing tax I want to hear about becoming mortgage free don't worry all that stuff is still staying but I want to be able to safely combine the two and and be able to work in those two spaces to make one very, very powerful space. So these are gonna be all the, the signs that I'm on the right path as I go through my goals with my deadline being the 1st of December, 2023. So step number seven is actually reviewing all the time my goals. And I will put this out there. I am not afraid to have to make changes to my goals. If I feel like I'm they don't sit well for more or I've outgrown them or there's been a change in my situation I need to adjust and tweak, I'm not afraid of that. I will make those changes because we are we, we don't set goals in stone i think you really back yourself into a corner when you start setting these goals for yourself that are um that you outgrow or aren't relevant anymore or you don't feel connected to it's fine to tweak and change them or rewrite them it doesn't have to be the first of january to do this you can do this at any time of the year and as i say thinking about doing this at the beginning of every month is really really powerful um, thinking about doing it every quarter or doing a big you know, I guess you could call it spring claim, but it's not spring in Australia in, in uh, 1st of July, to, uh, it's winter. But going through and doing, I guess, a Marie Kondo clean of your finances at the beginning of every financial year. This is really, really important. Now, um, I so I review my goals on a regular basis. I read them, I read them every day. So I've written them on a piece of paper, and this is my notebook for 2023. Um, on the inside of this so I can quickly and easily refer to it is where I've written all of my goals. So in the morning, it's easy for me to refer to it. Um, In the night time before I go to bed, it's easy for me to quickly find it and refer to it. I've also got a summary in my phone of my goals. So I 
can think about this whenever I want. Whenever I feel I need a bit of a reminder or I feel I need a, need a bit of a rush of inspiration, read back your goals. And as I said, that power of seeing handwritten goals is really, really powerful. All right, so what am I doing differently for 2003? How does this vary from other years? Well, um, firstly, I'm really ramping up my, my anchor. It's kind of ironic because I'm on the anchor platform now. But okay, and I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in my other podcast, I apologize if I didn't share this with you too, but I always have two key words at the beginning of each year that are going to be my mantra for the year ahead. Now, I've had silly ones like skinny and stingy because I went through a year where I wanted to lose weight and be more frugal with my money. And um, this year, my mantra is, it's these two words which I repeat to myself um, all the time, whenever I feel I need to. And my two anchor words, my mantra words for 2023 are simplicity and space. That's what I really want to be my anchor for 2023. I'll explain why. Simplicity means keeping my life simple, not running around like a headless chicken, um, uh, filling up my diary, making myself stressed and then permanently late and then feel like I'm letting people down. I want more simplicity in my life. I want to be able to move through my goals, through my lessons, through my personal growth in a very simple way with no temptation or limited temptation, limited distractions, just with some slow, like I guess at a slower pace as well, uh, not so much of a rush, just feel an element of, of simplicity. And that will also mean in applying what I eat, eating simpler based meals, um, keeping my weekends quite simple, not catching up with for five different social events, but catching up for one social event, you know, with my friends and one social event with my children and Tom and my family and my home. Um, having you know simplicity in my home, so really looking to simplify the stuff around me, having less excess stuff, excess furniture, excess belongings, stuff that we don't need. So simplicity. The other thing is space, which I guess um, also falls into the element of simplicity, but is having greater space around me to do the things that I want to prioritize what's important to me and. Um, allow the space for things that do need to actually come into my life as new additional things so that I can I've made the space to welcome them in but also have things get rid of the things that I don't need or don't want in my life and that can be all sorts of walks of life it could be uh, toxic uh, highly processed food it might be particular people in my life that aren't right for me or where I'm going or um, if impact me in a certain type of way it might be just simple social excessive social events um, it might be uh, work projects that don't feel right so really having space and simplicity in my life is what I 2023 is going to be really really all about now the two key things that I'm really um, getting rid of for 2023 in my goal setting and this is the biggest thing I really want you to really focus on getting out of this. So apologies is at the end of this podcast, but it's worthy, I promise. Two things. I'm actually looking at my goals and and the reason why there's probably less goals this year is I flicked the goals to habits. So you will notice when some of those goals I share with you that I didn't have exercise ones or reading a book, a um, certain amount of books per year or per month um, uh, or weight or anything like that. They're goal. They're not goals anymore for me. They're, they are habits. So I am not going to let myself, um, uh, I guess, the excuse of, a, of not achieving a goal for something not in my life. So I, what I recommend you do is when you're looking at your goals, ask yourself, is this worthy of being a goal or do I need to make this a habit? So yes, I do have, um, I guess, things in my life where I really want to work on my spiritual growth, my intellectual growth, uh, my physical growth you know, around health and fitness, but they're now habits. They belong in the habit box. They're not, they are not a goal. Habits are, are I think, more important than actual goals, to be honest, because when you have a habit, you prioritize it happening. And if you could really make sure you make it a habit, you don't think about it, you just do it. So success will just organically flow from that anyway. So like cleaning your teeth, you don't think about cleaning your teeth, you clean your teeth, I hope, morning and night. So for me, having a habit of reading one book per month is the habit I want. It's not a goal anymore. It's a habit. It's more, it doesn't, it's, it's worth more than a goal. It's got to be a habit. My goal of exercising um, two to four times a week is not a goal anymore. It belongs in the habit box. Um, so I've really, I guess, slimmed down and simplified, okay, and created space, my goals, 
by shifting the, the ones that should not be in the, bo the box of goals, they belong in the box of habits and setting them up in my diary so that those habits happen. So for example, I've set myself up for success. There is a book on my bedside table. So every time I go to bed, I, rem I might see that book and it triggers me to sit down and read a couple of pages. I've also obviously got locked in my diaries to what days and times I will go to the gym, what days and times I will go and take my dogs for a really long walk. Uh, I've got in my diary, you know, very simple meals and recipes to to make that um, will make sure I eat even better uh, quality produce for 2023. So big difference is shifting those things that should not be goals, should be habits. And that will help your goals become just list become smaller and more finely tuned. The second thing that I'm doing is there are going to be no rewards. Yep. If I achieve all of my goals, there are no rewards. No, absolutely none. I used to reward myself with a handbag. And yes, I have rewarded myself with a handbag for 2023, which I will share in a video soon. But I've decided and I got this idea from, I'm pretty sure I got it from at the Hoover Lab podcast. And that is, I am not having um, any rewards. He said, if you have a reward, it, it, it takes away the meaning because it become, when you achieve that goal, it feels like nothing. Um, it's a soulless reward. It's, 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 let's be honest, some of my rewards, like a handbag, it's a pretty shallow materialistic con consumer driven reward. Your reward, well, my reward is going to be feeling all those great feelings that I've put on my list in my back of my book of how I will feel in achieving those goals. That to me is a far better reward than a handbag or a new car or a, uh, or a gadget or gizmo or anything like that. That's uh, so, and I feel really proud about crap cutting that that from my life. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I love handbags, and I might buy myself a handbag during me this year. I don't know. I don't. I don't really care because I'm chasing the feeling of achieving that goal. That's the big thing for me. Now. I am going to wrap this podcast up now. Um, I, I am really happy to be on the Anchor platform. I would love to hear from you guys and let me know what you think of this format in doing this type of podcast, whether you like seeing me or you're happy just to listen to me. I'm going to be publishing this also on my YouTube channel as well. So you can, if you don't have the Anchor platform or app, you can also use the the standard YouTube one as well. But let me know what you think. And I want to remind you, uh, look at your goals on a regular basis, read them every single day and read your list of how you're going to feel when you achieve those goals. Cause there's something very powerful in that because you're bringing the future into your current reality and you have a greater chance of actually seeing these goals really actually happen and come to fruition in front of you. It's quite powerful that experience. Also don't be afraid to tweak change those goals as you review them and review that progress is incredibly important. I do this at the beginning of every month. Um, I do it most Mondays, actually. I do it at the beginning of each financial year. This is incredibly important just because it's January doesn't mean you, this is the only time to be setting your goals and you've got to quickly rush and do this. Take your time, do the list, write down these things that are important. You can work out what you really want to achieve, what your heart yearns for, what your soul yearns for, what your spirit really knows you're capable of achieving. So you can work out what is you're about because you want to set exciting, powerful goals, not just like boring ass goals that society tells us that we should have. Make sure it means something to you because you've written your list and you know all those signs about what's, how it's going to unfold and you can give yourself the, you know, the pat on the back and be your mini cheerleader to keep going your goals and raise your, your next bar. And I will also end this podcast with sharing with you, I don't add new goals in necessarily. I have shared this before with you guys, but I... I think it's really important as you're achieving your goals, particularly if you do have a slightly longer list, is you don't stop adding to your list. You stop adding to your plate because you'll constantly be feeling overwhelmed. Once you've achieved that goal, tick it off the box and use and channel all that new energy that you've got from achieving that goal into the next goal. So you're twice as powerful and as effective in achieving that goal. And you'll find that you move with greater momentum, greater efficiency, greater, uh, greater speed, greater, I guess, um, uh, greater, greater achievement because you've got even more energy to plan the next goal because, and you might even find that you not only achieve that goal, you achieve it, achieve it faster, but you achieve that goal on a more profound, bigger, better level. So you don't just save $10,000, you actually end up saving thirteen or $14,000. So don't get tempted to fill that, fill your plate with a new goal 
goal once you achieve it. Of course, if it's something that does feel right for you, then honor your honor your your inner voice uh, and do that. But just be careful of that, and really rethink about the rewards. Let me know what you think about my idea about cutting the physical, uh, commercial, materialistic rewards from your life and, and focusing on the reward being the feeling of what you will, uh, how it will feel in you, your heart, mind and body and soul in achieving that goal. I feel really good about it. All right, enough from me. A quick reminder to make sure you're following me on Instagram at Sugar Mama TV and Can I Campbell Official if you're interested in my Gabby Bernstein updates. I will be doing a vlog for you, sharing everything about it, but I will also be doing daily updates. And um, please keep the DMs coming in, let me, letting me know how you are going with this manifesting challenge if you're doing it yourself. Powerful stuff, guys. All right, thank you everyone for listening. Happy New Year, and let's 2023 be our year of achieving our biggest and best financial goals, whatever they may be. Ciao for now.